Mark chapter 6, let's read verse 29, it says, And when the disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse and laid him in a tomb. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for once again this opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, to get into your word tonight, I ask now for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon me, Lord, to teach your word, Lord, and preach your word, and bring it forth. As you will see fit tonight, Lord. Have your way in this house, Lord. God, not my invite, it will be done here, Lord. Move, finally, touch, save, heal, deliver, set free. God, I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In this 30th. Verse of chapter 6 of Mark tonight. You know, he's, he's speaking here of, of Jesus uh, addressing his disciples to come apart and into a desert place and rest for a while and in the 31st. But in the 30th verse, it speaks of the disciples. It says the apostles they came back just dealing with previously in this chapter here you see back in the seventh verse of that chapter you'll find that the lord sent them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits and, and sent them out to preach the word and so now having been going out and preached for, for a while they've come back in now to kind of report to the Lord, they went out evangelizing and preaching and now coming back to report to Christ here. And 31st verse, the Lord tells them to come into a desert place and must rest for a while here. And, and we just know here that the press of the crowd has been so great upon them and the needs of the people have been such such great magnitude that they have just been get, gotten kind of exhausted and dealing with each individual need and, and just working and praying and, and preaching and, right. and, and touching souls and giving the attention to every individual need that comes uh, to, to them. And, you know, but I want to address just for a minute, you know, uh, that, that this is a, a definite thing that happens as you're uh, uh, being a minister and ministering to others. You uh, you know, as they were anyhow uh, dealing with individuals and all their needs, and and uh, you know we'll get tired and, and in a place of, of weary and need to go apart for a for a season and rest a little while and mm -hmm. and be renewed with the Lord and and, uh, and refilled and refreshed. Amen. You know, but but I want to address just real quick. Also, there's there's a there's a uh, another aspect of that that's that's kind of you know it, it's in the flesh that, that that people get into and and you hear people say well i just got burned out you know and, right. and I, i've been you know in a place and many of you have in the in the, in the world out there and you just kind of get you know i'm just burned out on this you know or on this particular job or this whatever you know i'm just i'm just burned out on it you know i got to move on to something else you know but but unfortunately, people get that way, and you hear of preachers and ministers that would get burnt out on, on things. And, you know, but I, I, I believe this evening that if anyone that is really trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ 
and, and being filled and refilled with the Holy Spirit and really seeking the Lord and really trusting the Lord and having their confidence in the Lord and depending on the Lord for Him to do everything. Come on. In this place of being burnt out, it, it is not even anything that's valid for the true Christian. Hallelujah. For the true minister that's trusting Jesus, that is. Yeah. Amen. Now, you can trust in yourself and, and trust the flesh. And, you know, flesh can be throttling the flesh. And you can most definitely get burnt out right. in, in that way, in, in, in that particular way. But... But I just know tonight that if you're trusting the Lord Jesus Christ and, and trusting Calvary, trusting the blood and the great sacrifice, the finished work of Christ that he did for us, and our faith is completely resting in him, then I know tonight it is not possible whatsoever because he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Hallelujah. He said, I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. So we can come to him. We can carry those things and we can trust in him. He said, take my yoke upon you. Amen. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your souls. Hallelujah. For my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Amen. So if you find yourself in a place in this Christian wall seemingly burned out, amen, then you are not trusting the Lord Jesus. You're trusting yourself, and this flesh will let you down every single time. Amen. Every single time. If you're trusting in your talent, trusting in your ability, trusting in your intellect, trusting in your education, amen, trusting in what you can produce, you will most definitely get burned out. Amen. But if you will come to the Lord, amen, and trust in Him to do these things. Hallelujah. Talking about trusting in the finished work of Christ. Amen. The word said for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Amen. Amen. Them that's perishing, they say all oh, the preaching of the cross is foolishness. What good is that anyhow? Oh, why you got to preach on the cross for? Why you got to be trusting in that? What good is it anyhow? What good is a dead man hanging on the cross? What good is that going to do me? Amen. The Bible said, for them that perish, amen, the preaching of the cross, it's foolishness to them. Amen. And he said, but unto us that are saved, amen, it is the power of God. Amen. Amen. So tonight, amen, if you're saved and you're born again and you're on your way to heaven, amen, then you love the preaching of the cross because you know it is the power of God. Hallelujah. It is the power of God. Amen. So neighbor, keep your focus right. Come on. Never let it get out of focus on. on something else. Like I heard Sister White say, be cross-eyed. Amen. Cross-eyed. Amen. Talking about keeping the cross in you always. Not talking about a piece of wood. Amen. But what Jesus did there is what we're talking about. Keep your eyes on him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Forgetting those things that are behind. Pressing forward. Keeping my focus on all the time. The finished work of Christ. You see, when a believer... Uh, anchors his faith in this that I'm talking about tonight, in this great finished work of Christ, when he does that and anchors his faith there in Christ and him crucified, amen, then what happens is that releases, amen, Woo! the greatest opportunity oh, yeah. ever had this time, the opportunity yeah. to receive on, the Holy Ghost power yeah. coming into your life. Amen. See, that is the that is the power. See, yeah. There's not necessarily any power in the cross. No power in uh, Jesus hanging on the cross to speak. Not really. Amen. But the power is in the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, but when your faith 
is looking unto Jesus, looking unto the cross, looking unto what he's got to do. Yeah. God releases the Holy Ooh. Spirit in yeah. your life to come and give you victory, to come and give you deliverance, to come and give you salvation. Yeah. So that's how you got saved and started. It was saved. You right. got there by trusting in Jesus Christ. You said, Lord, I'm sorry for being a sinner, and I believe that you paid the sin debt for me, and I trust in what you've done. Lord, I accept you now and as, as payment for my sin. Save me. Amen. See, you looked unto that and you trusted yeah. what he did. And all at once, the Holy Ghost came, the yeah. spirit of regeneration, oh, yeah. come and flow into your mind. Amen. Glory to God. So now, having done that, amen, we receive everything else the same way. We look right in the same oh, place. Yeah. Don't look someplace else. Oh. Don't look to me. I've got yeah. nothing to offer oh, you. Amen. I cannot help you, but I can direct you come to on. the power. Yeah. Yeah.
I'll never live for the man. Because the Holy Spirit keeps it fresh. Keeps it refreshed. Amen. But only because we've got the right focus. Yeah. Amen. Calvary's finished work. Amen. Amen. But see, whenever it's a man directed after to win the flesh, when you're trusting in the flesh, that bush will be consumed. Yep. Yep. Amen. You'll yep. find yourself in a state of emotional breakdown. Come on. You'll find yourself in a place and you don't know what you just know. Oh, everything's crumbling in on you. Amen. You gotta go find a psychologist or a psychiatrist somewhere. Amen. Neighbor, you don't need one of them. Amen. Just keep your focus on Christ. Amen. And trust in Him. Get back to an altar. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. And heal you and heal you. Yeah. And then you you what you need for the journey. Hallelujah. Amen. See, the word says. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there is no, therefore no, no, condemnation. no condemnation to them yeah. which are Jesus. in Christ Jesus, yeah. who walk not, not after, after the, the flesh, flesh, but after the Spirit, but after the, the Spirit. The Spirit of life is in yeah. that made me free from the law. Now, we, we got to realize Ooh, this. Yes. I know well, I take a lot of time on this verse, right? the verses here, but. But I've got to really cover this tonight. I'm going to move on just a minute. But he said, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, there's a lot of confusion in the church today abroad. Not necessarily this church, but, but every church. Uh, uh, confused about what the flesh is. The flesh. It, it, it's not watching too much Andy Griffin. Amen. He said that walking on after the flesh is not the spirit. Amen. Walking after the flesh is not fishing too much. Hello. Amen. That's not walking after the flesh. Amen. But walking after the flesh is trusting in your own ability, trusting in your own talent. Amen. To produce that which is spiritual. Amen. Flesh cannot please God. That's right. And I said you cannot please God in the flesh in your talents and your abilities and what you can produce. You cannot. Amen. Wow. That's what the verse said. When men that walk after the flesh and not after the spirit. So walking after the flesh is trusting in your ability. Amen. To produce spiritual things. Trusting in the earth. Excuse me. Walking after the spirit. Amen. Is trusting. Amen. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Releasing the spirit into your life. Amen. Oh. Amen. So, everything that must be done in the Lord can only be carried out by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everything must be done in the Lord can only be carried out by the Holy Spirit. Anytime something great happens in the in the uh, spiritual realm, amen. In the, in the church, in the ministry, amen. It's it's just the Holy Spirit that did it. Amen. amen. Let's look on another verse here. Verse thirty-two says, "And they departed into a desert place by ship privately, mm -hmm. and the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran about thither out of all cities." Heard your neighbors say all cities. All cities. And outwent them and came together unto them. They outwent them. They outran them. All cities, the Bible said. Now, what this means is, Lord Jesus told them, come on, we're going to go apart into a desert place, into a, a, a separate place, and we're going to rest for a little while. Amen. So they got on the ship and they began to head that way. Amen. But what happened was everybody that was standing on the shore, they watched them. There it goes. Come on, guys. Let's go. It's going that way. Amen. They came through this town. Hey, everybody. We're going to fight. Jesus is going to come on. Amen. There's a couple of hundred more. Now coming through the next village. Hey, everybody. Come on. What are you going to get me? Come on. Come on. You're sick. Come on. Come on, here's you got a bad leg. Come on. 
Yes. Amen. The crowd is like snowballing, keeps going from town to watching him from the shore, just moving from town to town. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. So they told everybody, Jesus is coming your way. So by the time they get to the shoreline with Odell, amen, now they've done, the, the crowd has done grew up to just 5,000 just men only. Yeah. 5,000 men only, not including women, not including children. Amen. So we got 5,000, possibly 10 to 15,000 people demon-possessed, Sick, right. oh, just every which way that they could be beat down by the devil, and they've come there now waiting on the Lord. They watched him all the while. Amen. Isn't that something? Amen. Amen. So 34th verse says, And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to uh, teach them many things. Now notice what Jesus did not say. He didn't say, didn't you know we left y'all over yonder because we was going to rest? Uh -huh. Amen. Hey, come on, somebody. Well, somebody didn't get that one. Oh, yeah. Jesus looks out across the crowd of people there, thousands and thousands of people. They're hurting in every which way, needing healing in their body and their life. And Jesus, the Bible said he had, he was moved with compassion. Hallelujah. All of them, all the sick, all the needy, all of those there. Amen. So Jesus shows us here, amen, the heart of God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the heart of God towards all of humanity is to have compassion and show compassion towards the hurting. Amen. Compassion. What does that mean we have? It means to love deeply, to have mercy towards somebody. Amen. Considerate of others. Amen. Not so much yourself. Amen. But compassionate towards others. Amen. I might be hurting. Amen. But I'm concerned about that. That one that's hurting. Right. Amen. Come on. A good uh, picture of that is Joseph. Y'all remember yeah. Joseph? Remember how he was done wrong? Right. Remember his brothers forsook him? Yeah. Oh, they right. threw him in that pit. Right. Oh, Joseph, we're tired of you. Oh, and they sold him. Got a little few uh, coins. Right. Amen. A jingle in their pocket. Went back, told a big lie. Amen. Right. And there goes Joseph all into slavery. Right. He comes into the place. He begins to work. And the Bible said the Lord was with him. Oh, Amen. Oh, but then all at once, here comes yeah. the enemy again. Hey, Amen. Rolls up against him. Right. Amen. Tore another big lie against him. Right. Down in the prison, he goes again. Down in the prison. And my goodness, here's a man of God that's never done anything at all. Did you know the Bible? Amen. He's a type of Christ, Joseph is. Amen. One reason is because it doesn't show any time whatsoever that Joseph ever sinned. I'm not saying he didn't all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible doesn't record a sin of Joseph. Amen. So this is what I'm trying to get out. Here's a man. Amen. Hadn't done nobody no wrong, brother Odell. Amen didn't do his brothers wrong, didn't do his master wrong with his wife, amen, none of that, he's done wrong in every way, sitting down the bottom of that dungeon, amen, my goodness, and here he is, got every reason in the world to be mad and upset at everybody, mad at God, why'd you do this to me, I've lived for you all my life, I've done good, you told me you was going to use me, God, you said you had a great plan for my life, amen, if anybody had a reason to act like that, Joseph did. Yeah. Amen. Oh. But do you know what Joseph was concerned about? He come across yeah, somebody the baker that had a bad dream. Yeah. Oh. Baker. Oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, all that's been done to me, I'm worried about your bad dreams. Right. Right. Yeah. Huh? Come on. Come on. I'm trying to give you a picture of yeah. compassion. Concerned about somebody else. In love, they want to help people and be yeah. considered compassionate. Amen. The Bible said Jesus looked 
yeah. across yeah. and saw the hurting. And he was moved with compassion towards them. Amen. The Bible shows from Genesis all the way to Revelation, it records the compassion of God looking down on humanity. Amen. That is the heart of God. The heart of God is not he wants to hurt and beat somebody up because they didn't obey his law. Amen. The heart of God is this. He failed me, but I want to forgive him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I'll put my heart you. And I'll love you and I'll help you. That's the heart of God. It all is the Lord. The the Lord. Of the book, all the way to the end of the book. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible declares the compassionate uh, cares uh, uh, of God toward us. Amen. So when he cares like that for us, we ought to be imitators of him. We ought to be compassionate towards others. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. He cares about what happens to us. Amen. So we ought to be where we're called to imitate what he's doing and care about others just the same. See, the Bible said over in Matthew chapter 18, amen, there was a servant there who owed an unpayable debt. Come on. Well, there was no way he could pay that debt. Right. Amen. He didn't have the amount of money if he'd have sold everything he had he wouldn't have had nowhere near the amount to pay it was unpayable to him the bible said he came to his master he said please forgive me please have mercy on me and i will pay the debt just give me some more time and i'll make payments i'll do the better i'll do the best i can and i'll try to make payments on this bed just give me some more time he said and the bible <laughs> said that that king was so moved with compassion. Could he never say he was moved with compassion? With compassion. Amen. He didn't just give him some more time. And then the Bible said he wiped it all away. But he did That's what God done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible records on another place in Luke chapter number 15. Amen. There was a man there. He was a wayward youth. Just a young fella. The Bible said he'd come to a place in his life where he said, Daddy, give me all that owns the belongs to me. I'm going to Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. The Bible said he went out and he spent all of that. And the Bible said he returned back home to confess his sins. And the Bible said he come to beg for a job. He said, I just want to be a hired servant. That's all. Amen. You know what the Bible said? That father, he was so moved with compassion. Amen. He said, no, you're not just going to be a hired servant. You're going to be a son. Come on. Hallelujah. Talking about being moved with compassion. The Bible said Jesus was moved with compassion for all of these that were sick, all of these that were hurting. And you and I ought to be the same as Christ. Move with compassion towards those that are hurting. Move with compassion with those to towards those that are less fortunate than us. Move with compassion and care about them. Not just of us concerned with what we want and what we think we deserve. Amen. See the love and compassion of one person, it literally changed the life of another. Amen. 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 We're called to have compassion. Amen. It, it, a compassion is not just a, an appeal to somebody to feel sorry for the needy. Amen. But, it, but it, what it is, it does this. It, you don't just feel sorry for somebody. Amen. But we're to become involved in that person's need. We're to become involved. Amen. And, and help and, and set their life on a different course. Amen. Oh, you're going in this direction and you're hurting. Amen. But I'm going to get down there and get my hands dirty. And I'm going to get my clothes dirty. Amen. And I'm going to help you. And I'm going to get you heading in the right direction. That's compassion. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible said in Romans chapter 5, verse number 8, and that was to be my favorite verse. For God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Yet while I was in my sin. Come on, amen. Oh, he loved me and he died for me. Glory amen. to God. Amen. amen. I love that. I love that. I love that. Amen. amen. If that isn't compassion, I don't know what is. Amen. amen. Old dirty Ron Sarah. Yeah. Amen. amen. He left the spring of heaven, bro. Come down here. Amen. Got his hands dirty. Uh, amen. Why? He, he didn't come to get something that he needed. Amen. I didn't have anything I could give him. I had nothing that I could offer him. He, 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 heaven didn't need anything. Amen. But he was moved with compassion. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, Christ is the only source of compassion. Amen. And if you're not close to Christ, then, then you're not going to have no compassion. Hello. I'm going to come down somebody and throw them out. I said, if you're not close to Christ, they don't bother you a bit to see somebody hurt you. Just come on. Come on. Huh? Yeah. I said, but when you're close to Christ, hallelujah, you have compassion towards others. Praise the Lord. See, compassion is, is the whole reason that the gospel is took out into the world. Because of compassion for the lost. Compassion for those that are hurting and going to hell out there. See, we're, con we're concerned about them. We're compassionate. We don't want them to go to hell. Amen. Amen. So we, we go and we, we do missions and right. we give toward missions and, and uh, evangelistic efforts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 35. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place and now the time is far past. Now it's growing later in the day. The sun almost set. The disciples comes to him and they're using their human reasoning. Human reasoning always tries to take the first place, get up in the front seat. Right, come on. Amen. And so in their minds they say, Well, there's 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 no motels here, Jesus. Now, Jesus, you know there's no McDonald's around here. There's no Taco Bell, there's nothing. Jesus, we got to send these folks back now. Come on. Huh? Amen. They're using their 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 that's what I'm talking about, trusting the flesh. That's the flesh right there. These disciples are a perfect example. Of walking after the flesh. And so the word said, send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread. For they have nothing to eat. Neighbor outside of Christ, there's no answer for man's problems. Outside of Christ, there's no answer. There, you know, there, there was nothing. There's no food. There's, you know, what, what are we going to do? And outside of Christ, we just need to know this and just make a mental note. Outside of Him, there's no answer for man's problems. Amen. Now, I know truly there was no food there. Truly there was no accommodations. Things that they needed. And, and, you know, they had a, uh, you know, they, they had it right in their own sight, in their own vision, in their flesh. Amen. They was in a, in a, a desert place. There was no place to buy bread. I know. Amen. Truly, that's right. Amen. But but I just got to know this tonight that it's in those kind of places that Jesus uh, gives bread. Amen. And, and, and he gives bread. That you can't buy in town. All right, come on. Hallelujah. No matter where you go, you can't buy this bread. That he, he said, I am that bread. Come down. Yeah. 
Amen. Truly there was no stores. Truly there was no place to run to. Truly there was no hotel sticks or what have you. Amen. But but I just got to know this that Jesus gives bread that you can't get at, at McDonald's. Right. You can't get this and have it go away right now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank God, but you can have this that he has as far as being better. Amen. You can't find it nowhere. Oh, It's not that there's a saying that says it's not what you do with a 
million dollars if that was your lot. But it's what you're doing with the penny and the quarter you got. Amen. Amen. What do you have? Jesus says, search it out. Go and look. Amen. And give them to eat of what you have. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Now every child of God, every believer must look at every situation that we find ourselves in, regardless of the size of the mountain, regardless of the, how big the trouble is. Amen. We must look at every, every problem. Amen. Regardless of the size. And we must look at it in the context of how big God is and what God can do. Amen. Not what I can do. Not what, what I have. Right. Amen. Don't look at how great the need is. Don't look at how little you are and how little you have. But, it, uh, but look at it in the context of this. How big is my God? Hallelujah. How big is my God? What can God do? Not what man can do, but what God can do. Hallelujah. Jesus said, how many loaves have you? See, they were thinking, well, Jesus, we got to have thousands of loaves here. There's thousands of loaves required to feed all this great multitude of people. What, what are we going to do? What do you mean how many loaves have we? Oh, we just got a, a few fish and a few pieces of bread. Amen. But he asked, he said, what do you have? What do you have? Jesus is asking us this tonight. What do you have? What do you have? No matter how small it may be, what do you got? Amen. What are you what, what are you doing with what you've got? Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's asking the same question to every believer here tonight, every believer across this world. What are you doing with what you got? What do you have? Yeah. Amen. See, our problem is we only consider what, what we uh, have apart from God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But we need to consider what we have with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. See, I can do all, I can do little by myself, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Somebody better grant this time. Too many times we love this, and we say, "Oh, all I've got is just this little bit. I can't do but just a little bit." Amen. But what can God do with your little bit? If you give it to Him, hallelujah. And you put it in His hands and say, Lord, I don't have that much, so I've not that much talent, Lord. I've not got much money. I've not joy, got much education, Lord. But God, what I've got, I'm giving it to you, Lord. Take this, Lord. Yeah. To buy it, Lord. And Lord, keep me now. He said, what do we got? What do you have? What are you doing with what you got? Amen. He's asking the same question to us. Yes, yes. Amen. So don't look at it apart from God. But look at it. The smallest of our assets. Don't look at that, but look at the bigness of God. Amen. 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 Come on, don't look at the smallness of our assets. Look at the bigness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Many, many people tonight refuse to give to God for this very reason. It's so small it wouldn't help you. You're right. Come on. So they, they'll hold it back. It ain't going to be nothing more. No it's just all this. Amen. Playing little boy games. Amen. So they won't give to God. Because they're looking at the signs of what they do. They're not looking at how big God is, what He can do with that little bit. Amen. They're not. They're not seeing the big picture. They're not seeing their big God. They're not seeing His miraculous power. Now He can take a boy's lunch and feed fifteen thousand people. Neighbor, he can take that little bit that you got. Don't you look down on that? But you give it to God and be faithful. Amen. It might not be but just a penny. It might not be but just a dollar. It might not be but just a smile to somebody. Amen. But neighbor, God can take that that you have and He can multiply it time over and over and over again. And He can let the need be met. Glory to God. Preacher, preacher, preacher. Amen. 
Hallelujah. 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 Amen. But see, when it's all you got, it's all it needs. Come on. I said, when it's all you got, when this miraculous power touches it, it, it becomes more. We're going to find out it becomes more than enough. Amen. Hallelujah. In your mind, in your vision, your looking, that's just, that's just a couple of loaves of bread, a couple of fish, 15,000 people. I don't think so. Isn't that something? Amen. Amen. I preached a message one time, the miracles in your hand, using this verse right here. Jesus gave that to them. He broke the bread. And, and, and and the disciples give it to the people. Amen. 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 Peter went out there with just a basket of a few pieces of bread in it. And he steps up to the first man and he's in the refrigerator. My goodness. Amen. But the man reaches and he gets what he needs and he looks back. Amen. Here's the next one. And he feeds this one. This one. This one. Where are you going? It is in your hand. It really is. Amen. God is providing this. If you will provide a hand, if you'll provide faith and trust Him, there's no telling what God can do in your little bit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's move. Let's see. Five and two fishes. Verse 39. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies of the green grass. Amen. He commanded them. It wasn't a suggestion. Right. See, see right. the Lord is the commander in chief. Amen. He's the commander. Amen. And if you'll allow him to tell you what to do. Right, right. Even when it, brother, uh, brother Odell, even when it don't add up, if you'll allow him and his word to direct you and be the commander and tell you what to do, hey. and if you'll not get your little two cent branch, right, right, right. and yeah. don't say, well, I, I, that don't make no sense, you don't have to understand it. It don't have to make sense. It's not going to make sense. Come on. Your ways are not that way. Hey. Amen. But if you listen to him and let him command you, let him tell you what to do. Don't think, don't try to think about it. Just don't think about all he wants is your faith and your obedience. Amen. 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 See, if, if we'll allow him to tell us what to do, even when it doesn't add up, no matter how many times I'll put the calculator on it, it doesn't add up. Don't add up. Doesn't matter. That's right. Doesn't matter what it adds up. Right. Come on. Amen. I've said this a thousand times. Ninety percent in God's economy is far more than hundred percent in a in a in a somebody that's not trusting God. Right. 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 I know that to be a fact. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. And some people say, Well, you're gonna preach and you put such that. I spent years Come on. living for God before I was a preacher. Amen. Amen. I was faithful. That's right. Made my times. Amen. Amen. Come on. I know yes, that it is Lord. real. Amen. I know that my faith works. Right. I don't give a hit. Right. I Come on. Because I want to support God. That's right. Amen. 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 Yes, Hallelujah. Preacher, you done turned turn it into a giving message. <laughs> Bless Lord. Amen. But if you don't trust God and, and don't, don't try to think about something, you know, you know, God will send a miracle. And he'll couple and it'll be coupled with your obedience. And the need will be met. Amen. Amen. I, I guarantee you, I know this just as real as, as I'm standing here before you. You, you trust God. I don't want to keep you away from God. Hang on. He's good, Eddie. But are we still talking? Yeah. yeah. Amen. But, but somebody said, well, Pastor, I, you know, 
if, if, if you give and, and God will bless you, you can work another job somewhere or you can do this and you can, but I'm on a limited income. My check's going to be the same thing every month, every month, every month, every month. Right. It's not going to change. I'm never getting a raise. How's God going to bless me? It don't add up every bit. It don't. Well, I'll tell you one thing I know for sure. God blesses them that trust Him. Amen. Your check may be the same $547.96 every month. But how about this? Now I don't have to buy a new set of tires every month. Right, right, yes, right. Now, every time I turn around, right. hey man, I don't, I don't have to go buy a quart of oil because somehow or another the thing quit leaking oil. Hey, yeah. Hey, well, yeah. I don't know what happened, but somehow or another God got a hold to it. Yeah. Somehow or another, I don't know what happened, but there's a bag of groceries sitting on my front oh. Where did that come from? Oh. Oh. I'm telling you, God will make a way. Yes, he will. But you gotta trust him. You gotta trust him. All right, I'm moving on this time. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, Praise the Lord, my burden for you. Sit down on the green grass. Verse 40. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed to break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fishes divided he among them all. Wow. A miracle took place in between the breaking and the giving. Amen. <laughs> right. In between the breaking and the giving, somebody said, well, why is that important? What's so good about that? Hey Amen. Can I tell you, when God, he said he took a few fish and those few loaves of bread, first he took and he blessed and then he broke and then he gave. Now God does the same thing to you. When he takes a sinner from that world, he takes he takes him from the world. He blesses him. Oh, how many can identify what a blessing it was when God put out his spirit upon you? He saved you. He washed all your sins away. He filled you up with the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, I just love everybody. Oh, what a blessing it was. So he takes you and he blesses you. But then comes that message we preached Sunday morning. He broke it. Right. Go through that season of test. Right. Amen. See, we're all going to go through that. Breaking is a very painful place. Right. Amen. But it's necessary if you want to be used of the Lord. Right. Amen. Right. When you're in that place of breaking, it seems like blessings have just stopped completely. Amen. 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 Oh, this went off. Amen. That's where I'm at. Or that's where I was. Right. Come on, Hello. Right. Amen. It seems like all the blessings will stop. Amen. My God, hey, 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 when the blessings quit coming in, what happened? Amen. It's that struggle between flesh and spirit. Amen. Which one do I choose? All right, all right. See, David was a perfect example. David was anointed of Samuel. And of God, you could say, anointed David to be king. David was blessed. Amen. He was anointed. He took him and he blessed him. Hallelujah. And the great blessings of God poured out on him. The anointing of the Lord was poured out upon him. Amen. The great blessings were upon David, just a young man. Amen. And then he went out and he killed the giant. All the great blessings that was poured out upon him. Amen. And his chest began to poke out. Oh, look at the great things I've done. Look at the great things that God has done in me. Oh, I'm a blessed man. God loves me. Amen. And then all at once. Mm -hmm. God had to break you. Sure. Now he finds himself running for his life. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Remember Saul? Yeah. Hey man, what am I doing? I'm no, I'm the, I'm the next man of God. I, I'm supposed to be king, and I'm running from the king. Huh? Mm -hmm. 
a struggle. Uh, we all go through that. He takes us, he blesses us, he breaks us. Amen. Amen. It's that breaking process and see after he breaks that he gives. That's why I said the miracle came between the breaking and the giving. Between the breaking and the giving. See, he wants to give us. But we're supposed to have something to give back. Amen. He wants to give us out and carry something out there to that world. Hallelujah. Amen. See, he gave to those disciples to go and give to the hungry folks. See, he didn't give that to them disciples for them to hoard it up. Come on, that's the truth. He didn't give that to them Come on. to fill their pockets for All right. say, well, I'm going to go home tonight and I'm going to step on this guy here. All right. Amen. I'm going to have me a big bank account. There right. Hello, somebody. Right. You say, well, I don't know anybody doing that, Pastor. Just turn on the television on the uh, religious channel. Come on, Come on, Come on bro. And you'll see it. Come on, bro. Amen. 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 Most of the televangelists today, amen, so called faith, amen, is used to, to confess riches. Hello. Amen. Amen. Well, just, just give up, sow your best offer, sow your seed. Amen. Huh? Amen. But very little of the gospel is given out, though. Amen. I said very little of the gospel is given to the hurting world, and that is what they need. Oh, yeah, my, my. Amen. It's just a selfish message. I said it's a selfish message. Amen. They talk about giving. Oh yeah, they, that's all they talk about. Right. But it's only it's got great strings attached to it. Amen. I'll give. Maybe better be some great blessings coming out. That's the whole motive of giving. Give and God will bless you. Give and God will bless you. It's for Amen. That's for sure. My goodness, I tell you, I don't give because I want God to bless you. Come on. I give because I want to bless somebody. Amen. Come on. I said I give because I want the ministry to flourish. I want to be able to reach out to the lost out there, the hungry, the dying, and the down and the out to the powers. Amen. So that, that message is just appealing to greed. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, remember when Peter and uh, John walked by the temple. That would be beautiful. There was a man there. And he was asking all. And what did Peter say to him? Get down in the skin, brother. He didn't have no silver. He hadn't heard this prosperity message yet. He I guess he didn't know about. I guess he didn't know about this great message that that evangelist knows about today. My, my, my. Amen. It's basically covetousness. Is what that. God, it's not really a gospel, but that's what that gospel is. Right, right. A gospel of greed, a gospel Amen. of covetousness. Right. Jesus said, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall wear, put on. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, don't take no thought about those things. Amen. But trust me and go forth and preach the gospel. And I'll prepare and I'll make a way for you. Amen. Amen. So the word said, when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed it, and he broke it, the loaves, and he gave it to the disciples, and set before them, and the two fishes divided him among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. Amen. What Christ gives always fills. What Christ gives is always satisfying. Yes, it is. Amen. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and the fishes. So they started with five loaves and two fish. 
They fed 15,000 people, 10, maybe 10,000 people, and ended up with 12 baskets full. <laughs> Isn't that something? Only in God's economy can we do that. All right, come on. Only in God's speaking economy. Too. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, the law, the Lord don't work according to the laws of the land. He didn't work according to the laws of man. He, right. he brings heaven down to earth. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, he brings heaven down to earth. See, that's why he prays. He say, Lord, thy kingdom come. Yeah. Thy will be done in yeah. earth as it is in heaven. Come on. Give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. Pray. Amen. Yeah. You know, I've thought about that many times. Yeah. The Lord said, uh, let thy will be done in earth <laughs> as it is in heaven. Right here. Yeah. Amen. You know what the Lord, when he made Adam, you know Pulled what he did? Earth. He down and kept it to earth. Some dirt. So the dust. Yeah. Let thy will be done in earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, in earth. Lord, let your will be done in earth. Let your will be done in me. Hallelujah to God. Oh, is that your prayer tonight? Lord, let your will be done in me, Lord. Not mine, but thine will be done. Bless first tonight. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Praise the Lord. 5,000 men, and we know that didn't include the women and children and such. So that's why we, that's how we come up with this great number here. Maybe 10, maybe 15,000 people that was there on that day that the Lord fed the boys and girls. Amen. 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 Don't you never get to thinking God can't take this. Yeah. That's you know, what you have. Power and power. work a miracle with you. Yeah. Amen. All he needs is your faith. That's, that's your faith. Right. Trust right. in him. Right. Believe in him. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, I thank you for this word now. Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to enter into your house, Lord, and now. God, that to receive of you tonight, Lord. God, I know that your eyes of the Lord are still running to and fro across this land tonight, even as we sit here in your house, Lord. God, you're looking for a people, Lord, that would release their faith in your hands. You're looking for a people that would trust you with what they have, Lord. Not as little as it may be, as much as it may be. Lord, you just want it, God, to, to be placed in your hands so that you can take it, multiply it, and use it to feed others, to help others, to be compassionate and loving, considerate and kind and caring towards others, Lord. Father, help us to take this message into our bosom tonight, Lord. God, and let it find a place of uh, some good soil, Lord, to be established and, and, and the roots would spread out, Lord. God, in the good ground, Lord, and we would become fruitful, a fruitful people, Lord. God, in your kingdom, Lord, help us to be laborers. Oh, God, in this the white fields that are upon today. Use us for your glory, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's stand for just a minute. And I want us all to just, just, just say this in your heart tonight. Uh, you don't have to say it out loud, but I want to just tell you what I'm, what I'm getting at here. I want us to, to say to the Lord, Lord, I, don't, I may not have much, Lord. I may not have a, a lot, but Lord, I, 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 I vow right here then, Lord, to give to you all that I am. That's what he mainly wants is you, is that right? Give you all that I am and that I possess and what I have, Lord, belongs to you. Take it, multiply it, use it. Reach your hands out to the Lord tonight. And let's just let's just uh, talk to him for a minute tonight. Oh God.